I knew something had to change and I knew something had to change fast. Welcome back to episode 2 of Storytime, a series where I share interesting stories and experiences from my life that have profoundly shaped the person that I am today. And in this episode, I'm going to be sharing the catalyst for me to begin my fitness transformation. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy this video. As some of you guys may know, I used to be a fat kid until I was about 12, but then an event happened in my life which put me on the path to fitness, and I'm so grateful that it happened and I've been on that path ever since. So let's dive into the story. In January 2017, I was playing a tennis match against a guy named Alvito, and he was someone who I thought I could beat, uh, you know, pretty easily. In the warm-up, I was feeling the ball pretty well, and even at the beginning of the match, I was playing pretty well and I knew I had a chance of beating this guy. But about 10 to 15 minutes into the match, I started to get really tired. You know, my movement was really, really poor. My intensity dropped a lot. The power of my shots faded, and you know, I was just a fraction of the player that I knew I could be. And after about 45 to 50 minutes of play, Alvito coasted to victory, and I was really sad. Not because I lost, because hey, winning and losing are a part of life. But The fact that I lost to someone who I knew that I could have beaten, especially my fitness had been better, though I hadn't made that connection at that time. Nonetheless, I think losing to a better player is fine because um, the hardest thing there is to just admit you lost to a better player and work on improving yourself, and that's going to inspire you to reach higher levels. And I think that's something which you should um, aim to do on a regular basis, though not to the extreme. Because uh, consistently playing with people who are way better than you might kill your confidence. It's all about finding that balance. The more on that in another video. But on the drive home, my dad didn't really say much to me. But I knew that something had to change, and I knew that something had to change fast. I knew that my current approach was not going to win me any matches, and I knew that I had to make some changes. Once I got home, I got to researching what is it that top athletes do, which allows them to perform at such a high level on such a consistent basis. And what I found was shocking, to say the least. I mean, I knew that athletes were pretty meticulous about their training and recovery, and my research affirmed this. So that wasn't as much of a shock. But I found that athletes are equally meticulous about what they put into their bodies, i.e., the food and drink which enters their system. And man, I was in for a rough reality check. You know, it felt like I was hit by a ton of bricks. Because if I'm being really honest with you, my diet at that time was a total mess. You know, I would eat anything and everything I could get my hands on. I was eating all the junk food. You know, the sugar, the soda, the candy, the burgers, the pizzas, everything. There was nothing that I wasn't eating. You know, and I've made lots of uh, dietary and lifestyle changes, obviously, over the years. And that's something which I'll talk about in part two. But it was a rough reality check for me. I really had to reflect on the dietary choices that I was making, and now I could see that man. The reason I was feeling tired on the tennis court was because I wasn't eating the right foods. You know, I wasn't feeling well. I wasn't doing this thing that top athletes were doing, which is being meticulous about what they put into their bodies. I knew that it would require sacrifices. For me to become a better tennis player, but I was ready to make those sacrifices because I wanted to win more matches. And at that moment, I made a conscious choice to cut out all junk and processed food from my diet. Everything, such as sugar, refined carbs, soda, processed food, fried foods. Oh, by the way, when I mean sugar, I mean you know refined sugar. You know the white sugar that you have, not fruit. I would eat a lot of fruit. I still eat a lot of fruit, and I think fruits are uh, extremely good for you. And I'm definitely going to talk about that in a future video, but I made a conscious choice to cut out all junk and processed food from my diet. And in part two, I'm going to dive into the details of how my transformation unfolded. So stay tuned for that. Thank, thank you guys for tuning into this episode, and I'll see you in the next video.